let's go over how to do a partial F test. Now you'll notice you'll need library reg class for this, so we have the install.packages command right here. You can run this command in the R script. You can just type it in. We are just in a general R script right now, not an RMD file. That's why you don't see the back tick, back tick, back tick to start the R code. Next, we load up library reg class, and that'd be a good thing to get started there. Library reg class loads in on the bottom. We're hitting control enter to run the commands or command enter on a Mac. Next, we are going to do data survey 10. It needs to be in quotes. And with this in mind, you see the data load in over there on the right. Now, let's start doing a real partial F here and kind of the way it's meant to be done. And you can do it with any set of models, but this is one where it actually works and we can see when we should use a partial F and get evidence to use the more complex model. You don't always get that evidence to use the more complex model, but in this instance, we will. You'll notice our simple model right here is a linear model, and I've called it m.simple. With that in mind, we have the variable height and we have weight, just a simple linear model. We can get the summary of this model by running the summary. You can see 36.13% of the variation in y is explained by x, i.e. height is explained by weight, as we would expect. The coefficients and the estimates are there, as the standard errors are, the t-statistics, and the p-value. So now, let's create a complex model. And now this complex model has in it the explanatory variables weight, gender, and desired weight. And you'll notice uh, gender and desired weight are both um, two pretty big things. If you think about the male-female differences and how they explain height, yeah, that's a source of variation we probably don't account for in just weight. Also, desired weight is what people feel like they should weigh, and that might explain their height. A lot of people say, oh, I am 5'10", maybe I should weigh blank. I don't want to say weight lest I pick one, and everyone's like, wait, that's not what I weigh. I weigh more than that, less than that. But everyone probably has a weight in mind for their height, and then they might weigh something differently. So we're going to add in those three explanatory variables, which includes two new variables. And that's the key here when we make the complex model. A complex model is simply defined as any model that has more variables than a simple. So when you compare a simple to a complex, a complex can have 10 and a simple can have 9. But a simple could have 10 and a complex could have 12. And now let's get the summary of our complex. And you see all three variables in the model, along with their coefficients. I do want to point out that gender male is the variable gender, but that is an indicator variable for the male level. The reference level is going to be females because it comes first alphabetically. So simply you would not, you'd put zero in for gender male, or you put one in if the person's male. And that's how we'd handle the indicator variable. But we're simply just making a complex model here. And gender is such a great explanatory variable for someone's height that I decided to include it. You'll notice our model went from around 36.13% variation, I think it was, to now 64.33% variation explained. And that is a huge jump. That is a jump. But here's the thing. Are both variables needed for this model? And we could say, why don't we look at the simple versus the complex? And that's where we bring in the partial F. This is the point of the partial F. The partial F takes a group of variables, or it could just take one, technically speaking, and removes them from the model and looks at the impact of the model with or without those variables. And so I read it this way. Using the ANOVA, do we have evidence to go from the simple to the complex? And right when I say evidence, you should start thinking p-value because it's the probability of our results or results more extreme happening by random chance variation given that the null is true. And the null would be here that there is no difference between both models. And so if there's no difference, we should see no extra amount of variation explained. And we are going to remove both those variables and compute the sums of squares for the simple and compute the sums of squares for the complex and then compare it. And that's what we see here in this output right here. We have our simple model and our complex model and the difference between the sums of squares reduction. And it's pretty large. We see a difference of 3,887, 3,887.8. And wow, that F statistic, wow. Which says that this reduction in sums of squares is 274.81 times larger than we would expect by random chance. Once again, the F statistic is basically the observed over the expected, which tells us Imagine someone said, I'll give you $4, and then they give you over a 1000 You'd be like, whoa, I did not expect that at all. It's not by random chance, which relates to the p-value. This adheres, once again, to the idea that the larger the f is, the smaller the p. Large f's are unlikely by random chance, 
because once again, we're observing so much larger than we would expect. It's an observed over expected. This reduction in sums of squares is so large that we would not expect it by random chance. And then that makes sense with our world because we would believe just logically that gender and desired weight are significant variables to predict someone's height. And this does not mean we always have to go with what we believe, but sometimes it's good when reality is confirmed. And so we should stay with the complex. And give the very simple version right here. When your partial left test comes back with a low p-value, you will go with the complex model. That is evidence to go with the complex, that the reduction is statistically significant, unlikely by random chance, and we should go with the complex model. So I would say that this complex model uh, is statistically significantly better than the simple model. And the big reason we use the partial F is because we can remove multiple things from a model at once. You'll notice I removed two. The complex model had three variables and the simple had one. If you just wanted to take out one variable from your model, you could do that by looking at the summary command and you could remove just one variable. As soon as you remove two variables, you're in partial F world. You can't remove one and then remove another. Don't go through that process. If there is one you want to remove for a descriptive model, then probably you would just remove that one. But as soon as you remove two, you shouldn't do that because it's partial F time. Really quickly on the theory behind that, the reason being is all coefficients, standard errors, and thus t values and p values are all model dependent. By removing a variable, you change how the other variables explain the variation in y and their coefficients, their estimates, and all that good stuff. And you don't know. How do you know that there wasn't some multicollinearity between your variables? And once again, to review, you can remove one variable from your model, but as soon as you want to remove more than one, you're in partial F world. If you do hear random noises outside, this is during a UT game. <laughs> and as you know, those always create a bunch of noise. So here we go. Let's go on to just another example right here. This example that I wrote up, what I did was is I took weight and I basically saved it two more times. And so now we've saved weight two and weight three, which it's basically the same variable. And to make it actually make the models, I'm changing the values in weight two of the first one and weight three. And just so you can see what's going on right here, um, you can barely see the edge of this on your screen, but you'll notice this person right here has been changed. We can even change them a little bit more and you'll see there, we don't want to change that. You'll see their number change as I scroll back down to where they're at. That is where I made the changes on person one in weight two and person two in weight three. So if you notice these new variables, they have the same variation in Y, basically. And I changed it so it would actually compute the model for me and not just toss them and give me estimates because we can't have linear de literally dependent Xs. It'll not use them if I do that. So with this, we are making the second complex model here with height. Height is being explained by weight, weight two, and weight three. And let's go ahead and run that. So this makes complex model two. Let's view it and wow. Weight is not significant in, in predicting height. That's so weird. And so you would say, just drop all three of them, right? No, 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 no. And this is where partial F comes into play. What we actually have here is an instance of very high multicollinearity. And the high multicollinearity is increasing the uncertainty. And you should know by now that means the standard errors. That's variance inflation, increase of standard errors. And yes, this is very high multicollinearity, extreme multicollinearity, which means our p-values are just being destroyed. So let's try removing the two of them and see if we have if we can remove the two. And here we are. Let's see what this means. We have model one and model two. Model one is just weight. Model two has the two extra variables, so it's a complex model. When we look at the reduction in sums of squares, the reduction in sums of squares is only 21, 21.26, which is actually less than we would expect via random chance. It's, uh, you know, one would be observed over expected, the observed amount explained by random chance, or the observed reduction is equal to the expected amount. And the probability is very close to 50%. The F has an interesting right skew to it, so we don't get less than 50% if you're wondering why that is. But um, with the shape of the F and its extreme right skew, we get a p-value of 0 0.4315. And that tells us that our results this reduction is likely by random chance, given the two models have the same equivalent explanatory power. And if they're the same, why shouldn't we just use the simpler model?
And also, if you'll notice, my multiple r squared is right here, and it's 36.28, where my previous one, I think, was 36.18. Let's go view that again real briefly. And to keep in mind, my adjusted is 36. And yes, my adjusted actually beats out my previous model, the multiple. So even going by terms of look at your adjusted r squared, um, which is adjusted for how many variables are in the model, the adjusted got damaged a lot by the extra variables. And so there, I should go with the simple. To reiterate, just to show this example down here again, and that needs to be changed, just to show this final example, or this second to last example, when we look at this model right here, the going to the from the simple to the complex is not warranted here because this reduction is likely by random chance and thus we should stay with the simple model. So now let's run the last one right here. If you notice, this one is where our X's are just random and they don't even explain why. So let's run this. This creates some random X's. This is just the random uniform and you can see them down here, just random uniform numbers. Now there is a chance <laughs> that I could get something here. I could get a low P value 5% of the time. And of course I'm making two P values. So that's even a little more probable. But let's create our model here being explained by weight and two random variables. Let's look. Yes, I got high p values. You can get low p values by random chance, but the odds were in my favor. You can run the binomial on it if you want. And so with this in mind right here, both of these are pretty bad, but we don't know. Maybe it's like the previous example, and that's the key. Remember in the previous example, just to scroll up through some output right here, in the previous example, all my p values were bad. So I can't just drop them all um, at once. I need to run a partial F here. And it could be that the randomness explains the randomness. Like it could be that they're overlapping, that they have high multicollinearity and thus high VIS and standard errors are inflated and thus P values are being inflated also. Lots going on here that could be going on. Simple way to deal with this, run a partial F. So let's take our simple model here in our complex. And look at this, almost identical P value from last time. Um, we get a very similar F statistic, a very similar sums of squares reduction. And yeah, it looks like everything we are observing here is by random chance and we should stay with the simple model. I want to reiterate once again, if you've been watching this video, good job. I hope these examples helped out with what the partial F does and why we use it. Um, the way in which we figure out what variables to drop is via the summary command. Or you could do it via intuition, but once again, if you're looking to drop a set of variables from your model, you need to use the partial F test to figure out exactly which variables can and cannot be dropped in a group. And that does it for this video. Good luck.